Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 10 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Hey, well thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 10 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well let's hop in. Uh, this video will be specifically focused on memory. Uh, there are 24 DIMM slots inside. It takes DDR4 memory. When we open it up and do the install in a minute, we'll actually show you the memory channels and how to uh, configure it and install it if you aren't fully max maxing out with 24 DIMMs. Uh, the number, there's a number of different speeds that this takes. It's uh, 2133, 2400, 2666, 2933, or 3200, but this is where it gets a, a little bit tough, uh, so hopefully uh, you can follow me all the way through here, but um, if you have a first-gen scalable proc, you cannot even put in 2933 or 3200, uh, it won't even work, not, as, not even clocked down, just won't work, so no, uh, if you have a first-gen scalable proc, make sure you only buy 2133 through 2666, and depending on what proc you have, 2666 still might clock down to 24. 400 or even 2133 and it also depends on how many uh, dims you have per channel that could make it clock down a little bit further and one of the things that helps to uh figure all this out is HPE's quick specs, which we have on our website, uh, will show you, it has a little chart that will show you based off of the proc that you have, the max RAM, and based off of how many DIMMs in the channel. So it, it can be a little bit confusing, and if you have any questions, feel free to email our sales team, and we can definitely help make sure you get the right memory upgrade kit for your server, because it, it can be a little bit complicated. Now, if you do have a second-gen scalable proc, this is where you can use 2933, and you can use 3200, but the 3200 will clock down to 2933. Uh, that will be the true fastest speed that you can get with this Gen 10 box is 2933. Um, so, all right, so that was a lot to, to talk about for the speeds. Uh, now, the different sizes that it can take, it can go uh, all the way up. Uh, it can go as low as a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig, or all the way up to 128 gigabytes. Now, there is a key with 128 gigabytes, and that depends on what type of RAM you use, which brings us to what type of RAM does my Gen 10 box take? Well, there's ECC registered, known as an RDIM, and there's load reduced, known as an LRDIM. ECC registered will max out at 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gigs at 2933 speed. And again, for that 2933 speed, you gotta have a second gen scalable proc, right? Now, with load reduced, you can actually go all the way up to three terabytes, and this is where you can use those 128 gigabytes. You can put in 24 128 gigabytes, and that will be at 2933 speed as well. So uh, those will be your maxes based off of uh, what type of RAM you put in, and you cannot mix them either. So you can't put in uh, some LRDIMs and some RDIMs that won't work. And technically, this box also takes Intel Optane, and you can uh, put Intel Optane with LRDIMs, and that's a, the true, true max. Uh, but Intel Optane is officially um, no longer uh, available. They've closed that division. It's off the market. Now you could still get used uh, parts out there as a whole, but uh, Intel Optane uh, is basically obsolete at this point. Um, so what most people will be using, what we were kind of focused on in this video was uh, registered and load reduced. Um, and that's what will be the upgrade kits on our website as well. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about this, uh, let's grab our ESD gear and we're going to show you how to do the install. All right, I have my ESD gear on. All we're going to need for this upgrade is the RAM itself. So let's put this to the side, pop our latch, and remove the top, pretty much like any server you've been in before. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, HPE didn't make this uh, super, super easy, so uh, that is okay. Um, one, actually, one of the things I wanted to point out real quick, um, the one thing that they did that is helpful is uh, right here, there is a memory population guide. What we're going to start with is at least six DIMMs. We're going to do uh, six and 12 DIMMs in this video, but these are the slots that you would put your modules into. And if you're not sure what uh, what slots are what slots, uh, it's labeled right here as well, as far as processor one, processor two, uh, the memory channels, which are two DIMMs per channel, and there are six channels per proc. So everything's labeled right there. So if you need that, it's a very helpful guide uh, that's on the inside of your lid. Now, if you also, it won't, you won't be able to see it on camera because uh, it's just so, so, so small, but uh, right here 
is where the dims are labeled in between the dim slots um, and then it's right over here and then it comes back up over here um, so there they are labeled uh, it's very very tiny and very very hard to see uh, but it is labeled in here so uh, the way that you would do this if uh, you were going to put in six memory modules is how we're going to start and this is of course assuming that you have two processors processor one and processor two all right so as we mentioned two cpu cpu one cpu two 24 dim slots inside where do we start well uh, we're going to start on cpu one over here we're going to start uh, with dim slot one which will be this white dim slot right here then we're going to go to three then to five then to eight then to 10, then to 12. That would be the first six DIMMs that we'd put in. It would be the first six channels of CPU one. And people will ask, well, why do we uh, skip over the black DIMM slots? And really it's all about performance, right? Um, if you have uh, both of the, the two DIMMs in here, right? Uh, essentially you're overloading this channel and then one of these channels is doing nothing, right? Um, so essentially you just want to have an even balance across uh, all the channels that you are using uh, to be able to maximize performance. And again, it's just all about performance, right? Um, all right, so those would be the first six. Now, if we were going to put in 12, we'd come back over here and it'd be the same deal. One, three, five, eight, 10, 12, and that's going to be on uh, CPU 2, okay? Uh, now, if we were maxing it out, you would just load them all up, uh, but again, it's all about a nice, even distribution across all of your memory channels, and uh, that's one of the things that we should touch on a little bit as well, is that um, there are, since there are only two DIMMs per channel, that means there's six memory channels per processor and 12 memory channels overall, okay? All right, so a couple of things I wanted to show everybody that I always like to point out um, right here, this little carve it out area that you see in the leads, this notch, which is known as a key, is not perfectly centered. Um, and that's important. So when you go to install your module, if you have it faced the wrong way, you could potentially damage the DIM, or worse, you could damage the DIM slot itself if you break the little plastic piece in the middle here. And the problem with that is that uh, you might have to then replace the uh, motherboard as a whole. And you, you just, you, you're here to do an upgrade. You wanna make your system better. Um, you definitely don't wanna make it worse and have to buy a motherboard. So I always just tell people uh, a couple of just things to be safe about. Uh, they don't happen often, but there's stuff to be safe about uh, that people do make mistakes on. Uh, and another thing that I'll show in a minute that's a very, very, very common user error is once somebody actually installs their DIMMs, uh, they don't have it fully seated and they think they have a bad DIMM and it's not properly seated. So we're going to show you a couple of these kind of tricks along the way. So uh, let's go ahead and let's hop in on a DIMM slot one right here on uh, CPU one. So the other thing I always like to tell people is I like to pop open all my tabs before I get started. It just makes it uh, very helpful when I'm going to install the module that everything is just wide open and ready to go for me. So I'll go ahead and just do that real quick. Just pop them all open. Just make it easy for me in a minute here. So all right. So again, we're going to start here at, at number one. We need to make sure we have it lined up properly, which is going to be like this. So this is where I point out making sure that you have it uh, fully seated. You'll hear these two clicks. Those two clicks, you'll see the tabs have come up compared to the other tabs, and they hook into the side of the DIMM, and they pull it down so that we have a nice, firm connection. And I'll show you again at the end. If it's just off just ever slightly, it'll even look like it's in there, but the tab will be just sticking out a little bit. The module will actually not uh, be fully registering, and it'll look like there's a bad DIMM. And sometimes it'll even throw off the whole channel, which then all of a sudden it looks like you have two bad DIMMs, and it's really just um, the fact that's not fully seated and uh, that's one of the things when people tell us they have two bad dims in one channel uh, we generally suspect that it's uh, uh, really just one bad dim or that it wasn't properly seated and uh, that's the issue that they've run into so we always tell people just to rotate your dims around um, and the easiest way to follow or to figure out if you have a, a bad dim is to follow it. So uh, let's say you take a, you're having a bad dim right here, take it and move it to a different channel. Does the error follow the memory or does it stay in that channel? Uh, and that'll let you know if it's the, uh, the dim slot or if it's the uh, memory itself. So that's just some troubleshooting steps you can take at home if you're ever in a pinch.
So, all right, so here are the first six. And now if we were doing the next, to go all the way up to 12, again, we are hitting all of our whites. And in real time, this is honestly a pretty fast and pretty simple upgrade. And uh, it's something that I uh, always tell people as well, if they are uh, at home and they're trying to uh, figure out um, you know, how they can extend the life of their Gen 10, how they can uh, make it uh, last uh, for a few more years and perform a little better, upgrade your memory and upgrade your SSDs. Uh, these are the best uh, band-aids or uh, you know, fixes that you can do to just get a little bit of life out of your system. So all right, now that I've put them all in the channels, I'm gonna fill the rest up off screen right now. We'll fast forward. All right, so we've got all 24 DIMMs in. Uh, in real time, again, this is a nice, easy upgrade. Uh, definitely great boost in performance overall, something we highly recommend. If you are thinking of upgrading, uh, definitely give us a ring. We'd love the opportunity to quote you. Uh, that's gonna be sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And we custom build HPE, Dell, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, both new and used. So please email us, and we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home labs business.